All right, the future of industrial controls, take zero. Right. What we've established is that industrial controls evolve. We know they're gonna to continue to evolve. We know that the purpose of industrial controls will continue to evolve. We know that turning data into information is incredibly important. We know that we can make this smart and give it connectivity and not increase its end cost, the, 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 the cost to the end user. In fact, we can probably bring it down because we'll sell more of them. Is this gonna exist in 10 years? No. That's why every single sensor on the plant floor is gonna be smart and it's gonna be connected. Um, all right, so this video is actually, it's, gonna, it's in response to some comments we got last week. Uh, there was a question that was posed to me on LinkedIn. Do I believe that at some point in the future, all industrial sensors are gonna be IIoT ready? Um, it, so does that mean that every device that's in the field is going to be IIoT ready in a state-of-the-art facility? The answer to that question is absolutely no doubt that at some point all sensors are going to be IIoT ready. Okay, So to drive home my point, I did respond on LinkedIn comprehensively, but to drive home my point, I, I want to run through a quick exercise. So we have to ask ourselves, you know, what is the future of industrial controls, right? So and to answer that question, we have to answer the first question, which is what is the present of industrial controls? So what is it? Why do we have industrial controls? Tell me the, the reason that we have industrial controls. So, so let's start with what are some examples of items that live within the industrial controls uh, ecosystem? So PLC, PLCs, sensors, gateways, yep, software, uh, HMIs. So, so that is the what, okay? The what of industrial controls today are all these things, okay? What's the why? Why do we have industrial controls? To produce, automate. Okay, to automate. Uh, when we created, when we created the first PLCs and the first digital HMIs, what were PLCs and HMIs, what were they replacing in the space? Right, P push buttons and relays, right? So we evolved from push buttons and relays to PLCs and HMIs. Why did we do that? It was cheaper to put, to reconfigure the screen than it was to re-drill a new panel and put new buttons. And also mechanical devices fail. Relays fail, push buttons fail. It takes a long time to find a failed relay, okay? So that's why originally they came out with relays that gave you light indications that there was some type of failure in the coil, right? was so that you could find them quickly. So you reduce downtime by using PLCs instead of relays for all relay control for all your process control, right? It's also very, very difficult once you do the process control as relay control to reconfigure it or to add on to it, right? So, but PLCs and HMIs replaced relays and push button panels, okay? So the, the why of industrial controls for today, and we're, we're including PLCs and HMIs, is we want to automate, okay? We want to do things safely. What else? What are, what are the other reasons we have industrial controls? We just want to control things. We may not do it automatically, right? right? We want to have the ability to turn fans on the ceiling off, on and off. We want to, we want to make sure, that we want to, we want to do, put a set point on a thermostat and have our AC unit turn on to keep the, to control the relative humidity inside of our plant to optimize our process, right? So we want process optimization, okay, and control. What's one of the things that's not listed on here? Uh, data collection. Yeah, data collection and analysis, why? Well, probably because the first ones didn't do that very easily or... No one even thought of it. How did they, how did they do data collection and analysis? Chart recorders. They did, you right, exactly. So the old way, was they use chart recorders and sneakerware. They would have, in, they'd bring interns in. I mean, I've worked for companies that did this. You bring interns in, you give them a clipboard and a piece of paper, you tell them to walk out and take an, a sample of this temperature set point every 10 minutes and bring it back to me, okay? So ultimately what ended up happening is with the, this is industry 3.0, right? With industry 3.0, we learned that because we have PLCs, because we have HMIs, because we have software, Okay, because we have embedded controllers, 
we could start collecting that data automatically instead of using sneakerware for it, okay? So then, so... That happened after? That, hap that happened after the evolution. So there, the, the, the data collection and analysis was not part of the thinking creating PLCs and HMIs. And, all, and to, to pr I'll drive home my point, what was Alan Bradley originally known for when they developed the PLC-5s? It was process control, it wasn't collection, okay? It was, it was strictly process control, reliable process control, okay? That's what they were really known for. It wasn't until later on they added on the HMI component, then Rockwell did the acquisition and added in the factory talk software component that now you had an ecosystem to do all the data collection and analysis, okay? All right, so this is the, this is the 3.0 what and why, okay? So let's do the 4.0 what, okay? So give me examples of what industrial controls are for industry 4.0. Ethernet networks. Yep, so now the big thing that changes, you still have PLCs, you still have sensors, you still have gateways, now you have networks, machine to machine, you have mainframes, now you have SCADA, now you have MES, now you have ERP, now you have machine learning. These are all components of industrial controls, okay? Now in the industry 4.0, that's the what. What's the why? So we still wanna automate, right? We still wanna do things safely. We still wanna optimize. The big thing is we want to capture efficiency. That's the big thing. We wanna capture increased efficiency. We wanna do more with less in a more competitive market, okay? So fundamentally, that's the change between 3.0 and 4.0 in terms of the ecosystem. So now I want to drive home my point here. What we knew is we, we see that um, industrial controls continue to evolve, okay? So what I have here is a Pepperell and Fuchs um, INX 36OD F99 I2E25M. What this is is an inclination sensor, okay? So it's a very simple sensor, costs about $400, give or take. It is, it's got a four to 20 analog output and it's got two um, learning push buttons on it and it costs $400, okay? How much does a Raspberry Pi cost? Uh, 35 bucks. Uh, 40, $39, $39, right? You can buy a Raspberry Pi for $39. What do you get with a Raspberry Pi for $39? Basically a little, Linux PC. Right, you get an ARM processor, quad-core processor. You get uh, one, or you get four gig of, or one gig of memory. You get, uh, you, right, you put non-volatile memory on there. You get Wi-Fi and SD, Ethernet. SD you get SD card reader, okay. USB. You get USB, you get four USBs, right? So, um, so for one, basically one-tenth the cost of this, you have, is a Raspberry Pi an IoT device? Yes. Yes, and this is not, okay? The Raspberry Pi has real small versions, actually, that are even smaller than this, the, the Nanos, that are even smaller than this unit. Is this unit an IoT device? No. What's the reason why? Because it doesn't have um, connectivity to the internet. And it doesn't have intelligence. intelligence. There's no intelligence, there's no connectivity. How much would it cost to give it connectivity and intelligence? Less than 35 bucks. That's right, less than 35, yeah. less than 35 dollars. Okay, right now, in order for, is, is there important information on here that this sensor doesn't currently tell me? When the last time it was calibrated. That's right, when was the last time it was calibrated? When was it installed? What is the model number? What's the serial number? What was the lot number in which it was created? What's the internal temperature of the unit? What is the resistance measurement between each of these conductors uh, on the analog signal, okay? There's lots of information this sensor could tell us, including who installed it and when, okay? The last time it was powered up, cycled, powered cycled. It could tell us lots of information that our machine learning algorithms and artificial intelligence could consume, okay, right? So I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, okay? And I own Pepperell and Fuchs, okay? And I know right now that my cost to manufacture this is probably a hundred bucks. Let's, you know, and it's not, but let's say it's a hundred dollars and I'm selling it wholesale to my distributor for $200. Am I 
wholesale distributor is selling it for somewhere between $250 and $400, okay? How much would I increase the cost of this unit by giving it connectivity and intelligence? Do we believe we could get it connectivity and intelligence for less than $30? Yeah. Okay. And when we start talking about scale, economy of scale, yeah. we can drive that cost down even further. So will somebody, will some entrepreneur look at those numbers and say, that is, that's a good investment in this sensor. Could I, could I give this intelligence, and, could I give it intelligence and connectivity and not increase the final cost to the end user at all? Yeah, you could. I could, right. Because that additional cost is so marginal that I could make it intelligent and give it connectivity and still it sell it for the exact same amount to my end user. Now let me ask you this question. If I told you that I had this unit, which is four to 20 analog out, it's an inclination sensor, it does full 360 degrees. It's four to 20 out and I have two, I have to do manual set setting of the sensor, okay? And I don't get any other data collection from it whatsoever because where does this have to go? This either has to go to an embedded controller to do closed loop control or it's gotta to go to a PLC. And if I wanna get any additional information up my stack, especially in the machine learning, it's gotta go from here to a PLC, from a PLC to a broker, and from a broker to machine learning, okay? There's no unified namespace in there at all. Someone is going to make this IIoT ready. Someone, so someone's gonna make this IIoT ready, okay? And someone's gonna sell it for the same price that this one costs right now. And I, I'm gonna be able to choose between IIoT ready inclination sensor or non-IIoT ready inclination sensor which one are you gonna buy? Everyone knows that the word IIoT is important. You're gonna buy the IIoT ready one. So what we've established is that industrial controls evolve. We know they're gonna to continue to evolve. We know that the purpose of industrial controls will continue to evolve. We know that turning data into information is incredibly important. We know that we can make this smart and give it connectivity and not increase its end cost, the, 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 the cost to the end user. In fact, we can probably bring it down because we'll sell more of them. Is this gonna exist in 10 years? No. That's why every single sensor on the plant floor is gonna be smart and it's gonna be connected.